If you like pumpkin spice as much as I like pumpkin spice, grab yourself a tin of Body Workers Brew before it disappears because that would be terrifying. Today I'm diving into the deeper muscles of the spine and I want to focus specifically on the transversospinalis group, which are the semispinalis, the rotators, and the multifidi. Because these are really deep muscles though, I want to start off by warming up the erector spinae group, which are more superficial and a little bit lateral. So I'm really spending a lot of time warming up these more superficial muscles and pushing them away so that I can do the deeper work down into the lamina groove between the spinous processes and the transverse processes, which is where the transversospinalis muscles live. A couple of things to note right off the bat, these muscles can be tender and sometimes ticklish. So I'm warming up the erectors in a lighter way and I'm rolling over them pretty fast, which creates a little bit more friction than it does compression. And what I want to do is distract my client away from anything that feels uncomfortable. So I'm using one hand to brace down through the sacrum and the hips and using my other hand to create that warmth and to loosen up all these muscles as I work up the spine towards the neck. Mechanically speaking, I'm standing on the opposite side of the table than I'm working, and I often do this for demo purposes for the video, but in this case, this is actually what I do. I will stand on the opposite side because pushing is easier than pulling, and with these muscles, I want to move them away from the spine so that I have more space within that tiny lamina groove, and this is the position that works best for me. For good measure, I'm throwing in a couple of contralateral stretches and myofascial pulls, holding on one hip while providing traction into the opposite shoulder and vice versa, switching sides. Doing this is just gonna help open up the spine a little bit more, not only lengthwise, but also in rotation so that when I dive in, my work can be a lot more detailed. I'm revisiting some of that work into the erector spinae group, not to be boring, but to make sure that all of the muscles that are really articulating with the ribs and the spine are loose enough so that when I dive deep into the lamina groove, I can get to the level to which I need to work. Okay, so here is the lamina groove, and obviously there's one on either side of the spine, so you wanna make sure you know where the spinous processes are and work just lateral to those. It's gonna be more obvious on some clients than others. For example, with football players, their erector spinae are so strong that they pop out and create a deeper chasm where the lamina groove is. But for palpation's sake, find the spinous processes, sink just lateral to those, and your intention should go down towards the table and then away from the spine. So this work is really about posture issues, and I have more to say about that in a little bit. But for the most part, you want to work up and down the back and stay in communication with your client about where they are feeling any tension, any tightness, and make sure that you follow this group of muscles all the way from the sacrum up into the neck. Because although these are actually individual little muscles, they do work in unison and as a team. With all of this work, you want to try to create a traction with one hand when you can and do the work with your other hand because the spine has a tendency to become compressed and a lot of your focus is going to be to create length and to create space. Whether or not you work from sacrum to skull or skull to sacrum is up to you. There's advantages to both. For this technique, I'm using one hand on the opposite side of the spine that I'm working to create a traction and I'm using my thumb to work down the spine inferiorly along each of the muscles between the spinous processes and the transverse processes. You can do this with the thumb or with your fingers like I'm doing now, just opening up and creating a compression into the tops of these little muscles and pushing down towards the sacrum. Depending on what your client needs and what their issues are, either direction can be advantageous. And just for repetition's sake, it's okay to repeat a technique over and over. It allows the client to know what's coming and relax into your work. So as one vertebrae follows another and one muscle follows another, so can your techniques. As I make my way down into the low back, I want to create a little space. So I'm using my left hand here to sink into the SI joint and using my right hand to create length throughout the lumbar spine. And my focus is really about the fact that the multifidi muscle actually comes down and lays flat on the sacrum. So I don't want to forget that connection and acknowledge the sacrum's important role in how these muscles act. These tiny little muscles are given the big role of posture, so extension of the spine very specifically, and I wanna use that knowledge to my advantage. Only it's pretty hard to make a client extend their spine while they're laying prone on the table. So instead of having them lift their whole back up, I just wanna create a little activation in the lower spine. I'm asking her to channel her inner Beyonce and arch her low back a little bit, 
And when she does that, those muscles are activated. So as I sink in against that contraction and then she lets go, I'm able to sink down a little bit deeper and get down into that lamina groove and create a significant shift. You can do this working your way up through the thoracic spine, but obviously as you move up, the actions that your client is doing has to shift a little bit. So just ask her to lift her back slightly up towards the ceiling. None of this needs to be big. The only thing that needs to happen is that the contractile fibers need to be fired. And once that happens, the action potential has been reached so that when she relaxes, that dip in relaxation is the moment that you sink deeper. I don't know if you noticed, but I shifted my intention of compression, which can make a huge difference. It doesn't look like my much maybe on the screen, but I'm now working intentionally inferiorly as opposed to working superiorly. And the difference is this, when I'm pushing up, I'm sinking into the bottom surfaces of each of those little muscles. And when I'm pushing down, I'm sinking into the top surfaces of each of those muscles. So if you guys have watched my channel, you know that I like to be really thorough around every single muscle that I work, and this is no different. A quick tip to add to your expertise, if you use one hand to apply a resistance on the sacrum, that contraction is gonna be a little bit stronger and they're gonna have a better idea of exactly what to do. To elaborate on this, I'm using my left hand, my fingers and my thumb to sink in on either side of the sacrum in the SI joint. And as she contracts, I'm sinking down towards the table and out away from her and slightly up towards her shoulder. Lots of directions happening here. Compressing into that muscle and then when she relaxes, working through that muscle up superiorly and creating space, opening up the lamina groove and helping these muscles to let go. I'm about to bring my client's arm up off the table near her head, and I do that for a couple of reasons. Number one, it opens up the low back a little bit more, and number two, I'm gonna have her activate her shoulder. So as my client lifts her arm up away from the floor, a whole chain of events is happening. There's an activation of muscles around the shoulder that are enabling this movement to happen, but there's also a stabilization happening in the back, and these are the muscles that I'm targeting. So as she lifts her arm up, I'm using one hand to stabilize the hip and the other hand to slide up into those muscles, asking them to activate while introducing length at the same time. Reversing the action I did previously, I'm gonna guide my client into a posterior pelvic tilt. So instead of engaging the muscles that bring the spine into extension, I'm engaging the antagonistic muscles of the abdominals, which is gonna lengthen and relax the muscles of the posterior spine. I'm employing a similar technique, but the engagement of her abdominals creates a different effect. So if I ask my client to bring her pelvis into an anterior pelvic tilt like we did before, getting those muscles to engage and then resetting them as they relax is going to help muscles that are stuck or adhered. Whereas this technique might be more advantageous to use for somebody who's got a strain or an overuse injury where the muscles are a little more tender and need guidance into length. This can be equally beneficial into the SI joint and the QL because those are two areas that are pretty chronically compressed in general. If your client's having a hard time creating an anterior and or a posterior pelvic tilt, a good idea is just to take the bolster out from underneath their ankles. That's gonna lengthen the legs a little bit, bring the pelvis down, and help the back to open up. This is a subtle difference, but one that plays into posture itself. So the minor adjustment of straightening the knees is gonna lengthen the hamstrings, which is gonna tilt the pelvis slightly posteriorly. And you can use this moment to talk to your client about how they sit or stand that might be helpful to them. I've just created a lot of length and space in the spine, and one of the best ways to reinforce this is to walk down to the ankles and apply traction into the legs. And because I think repetition is so important to learning in general, I'm gonna have my client repeat the action of a posterior pelvic tilt as I apply a resistance, and then when she's done, reinforce that work up into her spine. Again, coming down to the ankle, applying a resisted traction, having her create an anterior pelvic tilt, a little more traction when she releases that activation, and then setting everything into place. The other handy dandy trick you have up your sleeve is a pillow. Placing a pillow under your client's hips and the abdomen is gonna turn their lower thoracic and lumbar region from a concave space to a more neutral space. I've done a lot of work from sacrum to skull and from skull to sacrum, but I'm gonna switch it up and move a little more laterally and create a little more friction. Kind of like opening up one side of an accordion, placing the bolster under my client's abdomen has created a lot of space between the spinous processes and therefore some space between the transverse processes as well. So my ability to sink into the lamina groove has increased with this position and I wanna take advantage of that and do really detailed work into these tiny muscles. 
I'm using one hand to support the other and I'm drawing tiny little circles up the laminate groove until I find something that I think is significant. My rule of thumb when this happens is if I find something, I always want to check in with my client because there are often times where I can find something that feels significant, but my client will feel nothing. And what I really want to address is pain. There's lots of things that feel different or unique, and I don't want to do a lot of work on something that may not be quote unquote normal, but is normal for my client. If I do find something that is significant for my client, one of the main ways this can show up for the transversospinalis group is to feel like a limitation in what the ribs can do or the ability to take a deep breath in. These tiny little muscles can have a deep impact into how the thoracic cavity moves in general. It's because of this that I want to take advantage of some breath work. So I'm going to have my client breathe into her low back using her QL to pull her ribs down towards her hips. And then I want to have her breathe into her rib cage, pulling her rib cage out laterally. These are two different breaths with two different intentions, but all play a role with how the paraspinals interact. While I'm down in the lumbar aspect of the lamina groove, I'm going to have her take that deep breath into her lower back. As she breathes in, I can feel those muscles get longer and more taut. And as she exhales, I can feel them soften. And this is when I want to sink in. I want to remind her that when she exhales, that she can deflate all the way out. And this is an extra step to take when working with breath that can raise a lot of self-awareness around how deep or shallow your client might be breathing in general. As I move up into the lower thoracic spine, I want to ask her to take that breath into her lateral rib cage. So remembering that the ribs articulate with the transverse processes, there is an important role that the ribs play into how these tiny muscles of the spine are going to act or not act. I can also create a contralateral distraction into the hip. So I'm using my left elbow to sink into her right hip while I work on the left side of the spine. But what I'm constantly doing is reminding her that posture is not just about sitting up straight. It's about what the hips do, it's about what the ribs do, and it's about how the legs act. So in this last technique, as I sink into these muscles of the lamina groove, I'm asking her to bring her intention towards her knees and visualize bringing her knees up towards her chest. So she's not really doing it. She's not physically able to do it as she's laying in this position. But if she slightly activates these muscles with just the intention, all of the muscles of the spine are going to act as stabilizers. And that's the bigger picture awareness I want her to get. Posture is not just about the back, but how the body moves as a whole. Thanks for watching you guys. I've got a part two of this video with some pretty cool sideline and supine techniques coming up. But for now, I just want to say a quick thank you to all my Patreon supporters. Your contributions make all of this work possible. If you're interested in heading over to my Patreon page for extra clips and deeper content, please click on the link in the description below.